Shalom, shalom, everyone. This is Ayana. I'm your facilitator today for the Yahua Direct channel. And today we are going to be talking about the Feast of Ingathering. And um, if it's the missing feast. All right. So let us get started. But as always, before we uh, go on, I would like to thank everyone uh, on this list and the ones who choose to remain anonymous. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, for really um, looking at the videos. Um, I am so thankful to you. And for those who are interested in supporting the channel, if you like the material that you see, you're getting edification through Yahuwah's word, and it's easy to understand, please, we welcome you to also to be a supporter and a donator of the channel. And we have three avenues, uh, or actually two avenues to do that. The first one is through PayPal which is uh, the our email address, which is yahuadirect at mail.com. And then through Cash App, which is just dollar sign yahuadirect. Also, we have our um, digital downloads page at shoply.com slash yahuadirect. And if you're interested, you can go to that same page and purchase the calendar for this upcoming new year which will be on the Gregorian calendar uh, March 16th so there are several things uh, new it's improved it's got great pictures new format it is a beautiful calendar you can get the full calendar for $6.99 or if you would just like the screensaver with just the feast dates in in Gregorian dates, um, that's just two ninety nine. And actually, we'll be talking about a feast that is on the calendar, the Feast of Ingathering. It is a separate feast than what we think. So why don't we just get started? All right. So the purpose for this video is number one to show that the Feast of Ingathering, or the correct word is Asap in Yehudith, uh, Asap is different than Sukkoth, all right? So um, commonly people put Sukkoth and Asap to be the same feast. We're gonna show that there's a difference. Second point, to reveal the real name of this feast, which I just gave it away, Asap. Uh, third point, evidence in scripture for this feast. Um, no, no, that was the third point. Fourth point is the time frame when this feast takes place. And then lastly, it is included on the upcoming year calendar. All right. So um, here are the scripture verses pertaining to the feast of ingathering, as it says in, in English, but it is. Uh, Asap. So there are only two verses that describe the Feast of Ingathering, the Feast of Asap, and that's in Shemuth, which is Exodus 23.16 and Shemuth 34.22. And you can see both sets here. Both verses mention that the feast is one of three feasts where Yasharel is to come to Yahua to celebrate it and that it is at the end of the year. So if we look, these are verses taken directly from blueletterbible.org. Um, in uh, chapter 23, 14 through 16, three times, you should keep a feast unto me in the year. You should keep the feast of unleavened bread. Um, I'm going to skip all everything in the parentheses. And uh, verse 16, and the feast of harvest. Uh, the first fruits of your labor, which you have sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering. So here it says the feast of the harvest, right? The feast of the first fruits of thy labors, which that has sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year when you have gathered in your labors out of the field. All right. So the word ingathering is a sop. And also the word gathered 
is a sob. All right. Um, so the second one uh, in chapter 34, 21 through 23, six days you shall do work, but in the seventh day you shall rest in earring time and in harvest you shall rest and you shall observe the feast of weeks, which is Shabuwe, of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, which is Bakor, and the feast of in gathering, which is a sop at the year's end. So in both these verses, we see that um, the feast of a sop is at the end of the year, at the end of the year. All right. This one specifically says when you have gathered a sop in the labors of the field. Now, what concerns me about chapter 34, Shamu 34, is that these three verses right in a row, each one has a pill crow, right, that starts um, a new paragraph. And if you remember that um, from understanding Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, I believe, we talked a lot about pill crows and a pill crow is just a little symbol, meaning that it's the beginning of a paragraph, right? So each one of these should have more in it. These are not paragraphs. This would not constitute a paragraph. So this is an indication that there's some more missing information that we don't have. So that is flag number one for me personally. All right, so now that we talked about the Feast of Asop in Gathering, um, let's go through the what I personally called, I don't think I've ever called it on the video, but I call Word Tree. So I go through, as you know, and I look up all the words that have the root word and I list them. So here we go. We have Sop. H5592.93, a bowl or basin. It can also be a threshold that is swept by a door. We have soup, H5486 through 91, to come to an end, to snatch away. Supa, H5492, to scrape or sweep together. A violent wind or a whirlwind, because a violent wind and a whirlwind, you know, it sweeps through, right? And it, it snatches things away going back to sub snatch away so a whirlwind or a windstorm would do the same thing sapop h5606 to spread out or to be a doorkeeper sapyak h5596 through 99 to be poured out this one's important seed that falls to the ground during a harvest which grows of itself without being sown all right. Uh, a siop, H614, to gather in or gather up to harvest, usually gathering apples and fruit. Ooh, sorry, apples and fruit. And then a sop, which is H622 through 30, to scrape together as in the fruits of the land and to assemble. So cog a sop. Or Kag is the Yaudyth word for feast. Kag Asap is a feast that gathers the remnant or the scraps of produce from the land, usually apples and fruit. All right. So keep that together. So every time I say in gathering or gathered, that is a sop. And it means to gather in, right? Um, some people use it as harvest, but it's to gather in, but it's also to scrape together the remnants right and it's also seed that fell to the ground during a harvest and it um, germinates itself it's not purposely sown it um, produces itself and it grows all right so uh, I have a picture here of um, someone eating a little bit of fufu with I don't know what the soup is but um they taking the bit of fufu, scraping it around the bowl, and it is a sop. Now, if you live in the southern part of the United States, or you have family there, everybody knows what a sop is. Sop it up, right? You got some good gravy after a dinner. 
you eating pot roasts, you got a dinner roll, you take that bread, you swipe it, right? You scrape it across the plate or bowl, as you see in here, sop, right? And you get the remnants up and you eat it with the bread. Sop, a sop, scrape together. A sop is a bowl or a basin. Um, a sop, you get it? Okay. So when you go to look at these examples, and that's Yahushua 9, 13, 26 through 27. This is where Yahushua directly says um, he reveals to the 12 apostles, one of you is going to betray me. And they ask, well, who is it? Who is it, Master? Who is it? And he says, who I give this sop to. And he gives it to, you know, Judas, Yehuda Iscariot. They give it to him. All right, so those verses there, 26 and 27 and 30. Exodus 12, 22, this is where Yahuwah instructs Yasserel to um, get a bunch of hyssop and drag it through the bowl of blood to put on the doorpost and the lentils. That word for bowl is sop. All right, and then Ruth uh, 2, 14 is where... <clears throat> Um, she is gleaning from the field um, and she's gathering and that word is asyap. Okay, so now we're going to compare and contrast Sukuth versus asap because I mentioned earlier that um, today people are saying that Sukuth and asap or in gathering is the same thing. So, Let's start with Sukuth first. Sukuth, the harvest, because it's harvested it right before you give Sukuth. So Sukuth is on the 15th day uh, of the seventh month. Now, we just talked about in the fall feast that it originated in the third month. But I did mention that um, Yahuwah demanded that Sukuth be in the seventh month. And I, that was Ezekiel 45. I believe I have it here somewhere on this video. But uh, so let's just say the seventh month. All right. So right before Sukkoth is a great harvest and that that uh, crop is purposely sown. Right. It has Sukkoth happens right after that harvest. Um, and it's such a great harvest that uh, Yahuwah demands during Sukkoth that a week's worth, which is actually eight days of Feasting happens during Kag Sukuth, right? And he demands that we be happy and jubilant and thankful that Yahuwah Baruch us during the entire year, right? And as I stated, it happens in the seventh month of the year. Now, remember, ASAP happens at the end of the year. The seventh month is not the end of the year. There are 12 months in a year. So the seventh month is not the end of the year. And I know what you you are to told when it comes to the Feast of Ingathering or Kag Asap. They say, well, it's the agricultural year. But there is nothing in scripture that says there is an agricultural year. It is just a year. This is an agrarian society. They mostly are farmers year round. There wouldn't be an agricultural year because that is a way of life all the time for them. I know they break. I know that you're told, you know, by rabbis and others that there's a civil year, there's a agricultural year and all these different calendars, but there's no indication of that when you read scripture. All right. Now let's move over to a sop. A sop grows as a result of seeds falling on the ground after uh, during a harvest. So they're out in the field, they're plucking, um, they're cutting down, and they're gathering sheaths of grain right in the field. Um, and they're gathering the, the main parts of the fruits and seeds fall um, as it's being gathered and put into baskets and stored in the, in the barn and things like that. All right. 
It's the second harvest of remnant crops. Um, now, second harvest means it grows of its own, it um, becomes mature, and then it's gathered. But it's a remnant. It's nowhere near the uh, harvest of a sakuth or the harvest of bakor or the harvest that's supposed to be around Pasak, right? So there's actually three kinds of a sop in scripture, right? Where you gather the 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 food, right? Or the crops. Um, there's an annual one, which is the one we're talking about today. There's one during the Shabbat year, right? When the seventh year is a Shabbat year, you're not allowed to reap or sow. You just eat whatever um, is produced, right? And then there's one during Jubilee. Um, and I have the verses down that you can look at, right? So when it comes to a Jubilee year, you know, I, I believe you can't eat, you can't pick anything for three years. You pick on the sixth year, Yahuwah, he makes sure that you reap enough fruits to last you three years. Seventh year, you can't do anything. The eighth year, you eat what you were already had picked in the sixth year. And then um, in the ninth year, uh, you sow and then you can uh, reap, right? So, and the last point for a stop is that it happens at the end of the year. Now, during my research, I was not able to find a specific uh, amount of days, but I was able to find when it happens. So let's go further. So uh, something interesting happened when I looked up three times a year because Yahuwah says it a few times as what you see here and he says three times a year men are supposed to come and meet me in a place where I place my name so the first one here is in Debarum 16 verse 16 three times in a year shall all your males appear before Yahuwah your Lua in a place where he shall choose in a feast of Matzuth right unleavened bread in a feast of Shabuwe which is the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Sakuth, And they shall not appear before Yahuwah empty-handed. Uh, another one, uh, Second Chronicles 8.13, even at a certain rate every day, offering according to the commandment of Masha on the Shabbos and on the new months. And on the appointed times, three times in a year, in a feast of Mazuth, unleavened bread, Shabu'e, and a feast of Sakuth. Now, here's the contrast and the difference. We went over these two verses. In the feast of uh, three times, you shall keep a feast to me. This is Yahuwah speaking. The feast of Mazuth. Um, and we look at that where there was a lot in parentheses. So that's why I have the uh ellipsis and the feast of harvest the bakor of your labors which you have shown in the field and the feast of asap which is at the end of the year when you have gathered your work out of the field all right um and then same one feast of shibue the first fruits of the wheat harvest which is bakor in the feast of asap now what's interesting is in these two verses it says sakuth in these two verses it says asap now this is why they correlate one with another but that's not the only difference right these two it says shibue this says um bakor and this um says Shibue and Bakor because first fruits is Bakor. So it says Shibue of the first fruits of the Bakor of the wheat harvest and then Asap. Now I have this highlighted in blue because this contrasts what is said about Bakor right before. Bakor you actually sow in a field. Asap is what you gathered in your work out of the field so this was actually sown and this is what you gather that really wasn't sown so there's a contrast here right now i don't know it would probably take more but there's a re 
I don't know what the discrepancy is or why it comes that, right? Because Bakor is mentioned here, Shibue is mentioned here, Sakuth is mentioned here, and Asap is mentioned here. Somebody else would probably have to do that. All right. So when does Asap take place? As I mentioned in the Origin of the Fall Feast video, which was the uh, two videos ago, um, Sukkoth took place in the third month, but it was mandated in the seventh month. Aha, so I remember that. Ezekiel 45, 25. So in the future, uh, it will be mandated for the seventh month. So since a sop means to scrape together and is seed that grows of itself after falling to the ground, that means spilled seed most likely happens after a harvest. That harvest takes place right before Sukkoth. All right. So most grains and fruits take three to four months to grow, meaning that the feast of a sop or in gathering would take place in the 10th month of Ashar. Um, I'm going to say 10th slash 11th month. All right. So. What types of food are gathered for a sop? Um, and these are some of the fruits that would be gathered. Pomegranates, grapes, figs. There would also be um, dates, apples, um, uh, I want to say almonds, and... Um, there's one slipping my mind, but uh, just a minute. Okay, um, I can't, I can't remember what the other fruit and other nuts were, but this is a a good depiction. So let's go to uh, Joel one ten through twelve. Because <laughs> this helps describe what kind of crops and fruits that Yasharel has. The field is wasted and the land mourns for the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languishes. Be ashamed, O oh you farmers. How, O oh you vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up and the fig tree languishes, the pomegranate tree and the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because the joy is withered away from the sons of men. Okay, so we've got a lot here. We've got corn, new wine, that means grapes, which it's mentioned here again the vine we've got wheat and barley fig trees palm trees because you, you need that palm oil apple trees and other fruit trees of the field here is another verse which is people say Haggai but it's Kagya and that means Yahuwah's feast or my feast um, which we are talking about the feast of Asap Kag Asap Chapter 2, verse 19, is the seed yet in the barn? As yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not bared, but from this day I will barak you. This is Yahuwah speaking. He is talking to um, Kagya or Haggai, and he's saying, you know, if you turn back to me, I will turn back to you, and I will baruch you even though you don't see evidence and the date, because this is going to come up the date that this happened. I want to say the previous verse in 18, it says that Yahuwah came to Kagya or Haggai in the 24th day of the ninth month. Keep that in mind. All right. So let's talk sewing cycles. So I'm going to go backwards first. From the calendar. So I'm going to start to the beginning of the year and go backwards towards the end. So we know that the flax and the barley were 
were struck during right before Pasak during the um uh the pestilence, right? The the pestilences that Yahuwah did to Egypt and Pharaoh um to let so Pharaoh would let Yasharel go, right? And you can find that verse in Shemuth nine verses thirty one and thirty two. It says the flax and the barley were smitten because um it was they were in the ear and they were ready, getting ready to be harvested, right? Um, and then also says that the wheat and the rye were not because they were not ready. They were not mature. They were not. They were still green. All right. So I looked up how long it takes barley to grow, how long it takes wheat to grow, how long it takes apples to grow. So barley takes three months. Wheat takes four months. Apples take two months once from budding to producing fruit two months so if you go backwards three to four months when barley was planted for the beginning of the year that would take you back to the 10th or 11th month all right now let's move forwards from Sukkoth right Sukkoth starts on the 15th day of the seventh month it takes place after the harvest, immediately after the harvest, right? So it takes four months for wheat to grow and three months for barley to grow, all right? So four months from the seventh month would put it at the 11th month. Three months for barley would put it at the 10th month. In addition, if you go back, to what we just read on Kagya 219. I I mentioned that on the 24th day of the ninth month, Yahuwah said that the fruit trees had not produced, but Yahuwah would still baruch them. The fruit trees, right? It takes six to eight weeks for apples to fruit from blossom. So that's about two months. Six weeks is a month and a half. Eight weeks is two months. If you go forward from the ninth month, two months, that puts it at the 11th month. That means the fruit and the remnant wheat and barley would be ready within the 10th to 11th month. Now, to make it even more simpler and easier to understand, because I know I said a lot. All right. So. The last great harvest of the year is in the seventh month before Sukkoth. The next great harvest, because there are no harvesting between this time, is the first month before Pesach, right? That's a six-month span with no harvest. All right, we talked about this three to four months for grain to grow. Two months for fruit to grow from the ninth month, that will put that in the 10th and 11th month. Same thing backwards from Pasak, planting barley and flax had to have happened three months prior to the first month. Again, that puts you at the 10th to 11th month. No, there is no other harvest between Pasak and um, Sukkoth. Why? Because it's winter. It's the raining season. Winter, it says winter in English. You can look at Yaukanan 10.22. Yahusha was in the temple during the time of the Feast of Dedication. And it specifically says it was winter. Yahusha also mentions in another uh, part of scripture that pray that you do not have to flee during winter or the Shabbat. Winter is the rainy is the rainy season and it's a torrential rain. You can't plant any grain in the field when it's torrential rainy season like that. Your grains your grain wouldn't grow, it'll drown. So there ain't no planting planting or or planting any type of grain between the seventh month and the first month. So how do you, how would Yasserel sustain itself without having any grain 
to grow in between the six month time. That means that remnant grain that fell during the harvest before Sukkoth and it grew three to four months, remember, put you at this, this area. They would harvest that in addition to the fruit <clears throat> that would grow, uh, you know, two months. They would gather that in the 10 to 11 month and that would sustain them. They would also, during this time, start planting for barley. Just because you're planting and you're sowing barley, you're not getting a barley harvest. You're getting a remnant of what was left over, sapyak. All right, so that puts the feast of a sap, kog a sap, in the 10th and 11th month. Now, because I've been researching this, um, I've known this since last year. So when I planned for the calendar this year, I actually put, this is a picture of the 11th month and I have in gathering and I talk about, uh, I have the quote here from Ruth when she was gathering, um, she was gleaning from Boaz's field and it mentions gather. It mentions a sop in there too, the barley harvest and her and her mother arrived during the heart barley harvest. And she stayed until the wheat harvest, which is four months after Pesach, right? So I hope that you enjoy this. Uh, it is a distinctly different day than Sukkoth because of scraping together what's left because of gathering the wheat that grew of itself, which is not as great as the regular harvest. It is distinctly different. And I hope I was able to point that out to you. And may Yahua Baruch you and your family. May he um, inform you of the truth of his word. May he um, protect you and provide for you. And I thank you for listening to this today. And I all ask all these things in Yahua through Yahusha Hamashak. Hallelujah. <laughs>